Good morning. It is currently Sunday, April 30th, 2023, and it's rolling up on about 11 o'clock a.m. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I've been driving truck now for a couple of years. After retiring as a police detective, um, I did 25 years as a cop, and the timing was right for me to get out. I initially wanted to try and start my own trucking business, um, but the economy tanked right after I retired, so that didn't happen. Um, you know, and the economy is still just bad enough that I just don't, I just don't think it's the right gamble at this time to uh, go buy a truck. Um, I wanted to start out with, you know, of course, my own truck, maybe leased onto somebody, and ultimately maybe getting my own authority and having people lease on to me maybe i was going to venture into that i know people that have their own trucking company um they're well established been doing it for a long time and they are very successful um but like i said they're very established and been doing it for a long time anyway um so i did 25 years as a cop uh, during that 25 years, I was, I patrolled a uh, very busy part of town. I was a, um, uh, also a detective for about half my career. Um, and during that time as a detective, I investigated pretty much everything you can think of. Um, literally, I've investigated everything from a $10 theft to a quadruple murder. Um, I've investigated it all um you know i was a general case detective i was a homicide detective i was a financial crimes detective special victims detective property crimes detective um i did every squad i think that we had as far as uh detectives um you know and my niche was probably the violent stuff um you know, I worked a lot of third shift hours and would um, work a lot of shootings and beatings and stabbings and, and things like that. And let me tell you, it's a different world on third shift. It really is. Uh, there, there's so much going on, even in the little city where I was from. Uh, we had about 130,000 people and uh, we were very busy. I mean, we could... We could get up around, I think we averaged somewhere around 15 to 18 homicides a year. Um, and um, lots of other crimes. Uh, but anyway, so I hadn't made a video in a while. And what really kind of prompted me on making this video is I just watched a very popular, um, a very popular YouTuber who uh, does a lot of trucking videos and talks about uh, things in the industry. Um, you know, and, and I, I, I used to be a very big fan of his, but to be honest with you, as of late, I don't know if it's him just not doing his due diligence as a researcher. I mean, he has a lot of people watching his channel, a lot. He's very popular and uh but he tends to talk about things that to be honest with you he's just kind of out of his lane on you know he's giving his opinions on basically law enforcement when well he doesn't have any experience there now trucking the guy's been trucking and if he wants to talk about trucking and all that i'm cool with that but he wants to talk about a lot of interactions that truck drivers have with law enforcement and sometimes he will talk about how the um you know the cops were wrong and the cops were lying and in fact the the most recent video that i watched it was headlined about something about you know three cops lied on police reports or something along those lines and uh and i'll be honest with you just because i was a cop doesn't mean that i will blindly uh support the police side of any kind of incident because i know that sometimes we get it wrong i mean you can look at some of my past videos and i've i've um i've explained what it's like to be a cop and it's not it's not as simple as people think i mean it's very hectic it's very stressful every situation that we're in is very fluid and we basically have to go from a zero to zero to a 100 and 100 to zero at the drop of a hat you know and and 
and we have to basically have have a lot of knowledge stored in our memory banks that we make decisions on at the drop of a hat that attorneys and judges get days, weeks, you know, or even months sometimes to uh, prepare, argue, and research before a final decision is ever made. You know, I mean, you know, and those are people that, you know, went, went to went to law school, you know, to and they're the ones that know um, or, well, should be the experts on the criminal procedure aspect of um, aspect of the law. Um, but in any case, you can, you know, if you want to watch some of those, um, you know, feel free, you know, and hit that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you've got comments, comment, you know, and if you, if you, and I don't care what people say, you know, in their comments. I mean, if you, if I say something you don't, if I say something that I, or that you don't agree with, let me know. If I say something incorrect, let me know, because guess what? I'm human. I make errors. And sometimes my opinion is not going to be popular. Sometimes your opinion may not be popular. It is what it is. But anyway, so the video he um, made was about a truck driver. I uh, forget what city it was, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, there was a truck driver that crashed into a police car because the police car was doing a rolling slowdown. Um, basically, what happened was uh, there was something going on um, ahead on the interstate or the highway or whatever. And a cop gets up on the interstate and just kind of swerves back and forth with his lights on. And a siren, I believe he had a, I believe he had a siren on too. But he swerves back and forth in an attempt to slow down traffic. And the idea is that, you know, the traffic will slow down at him. And then it will just cause a chain reaction, uh, just like if um, traffic is uh, coming upon a um, um, an accident or construction site or something like that. Um, you know, and, and and to be honest with you, you know, the, the the truck driver, yeah, crashed into him. But after watching the whole video, I you know, I got to say that sometimes crap just happens. You know, and they ended up citing the truck driver. Uh, for the crash, um, and I don't think the cop, well, maybe the cops did cite him because they talked about mailing a ticket, uh, but, uh, but I guarantee this was something that was, you know, discussed with probably um, the cops, the prosecuting attorneys, whether, the, whether it's the city attorney or the state attorney, um, you know, whoever's going to handle the case, um, you know, and they probably were trying to find something to charge somebody with. And, um, you know, and bottom line is, you know, the, the cop had his emergency lights and sirens on, uh, but he was doing something that was pretty confusing. And to be honest with you, if I was there, I might have been confused as well. Uh, basically, the it looked like the driver was pretty, the driver of the, of the truck was pretty far to the left, maybe even in the far left lane up against the median. And he was trying to shut down, look like a multi-lane highway. And basically he starts out, you know, doing a maneuver like this, we're doing a swerving maneuver and at one point as as the cop is driving away it looks like he swerves really far to the right well the uh truck thought he was going this way you know just going to keep going back out that way maybe off to the shoulder and he mentioned something about maybe getting up behind the officers that were you know dealing with whatever they had to deal with ahead so basically the cop you know swerves out to the right and then the the truck starts to go um starts is traveling in the left lane i think even the far left lane and then the cop swerves back but the and the cop is going so slow uh trying to do the rolling slowdown that the guy ends up hitting the, the driver ends up hitting the cop um to be honest with you you know if i was the cop I, and even did that i i would probably say hey you know sometimes shit just happens i mean it does and uh, you know you don't have to try and have somebody to blame for uh, every little incident that happens but unfortunately we live in a time where um, a lot of people actually expect to try and hold somebody accountable um, you know and, and to be honest with you in my opinion you know I think the cop probably could have done something different you know instead of making his swerves his weave pattern or whatever so large maybe if he could have stayed kind of in the middle and made it smaller you know um and just kind of 
you know, instead of trying to go basically from fog line to fog line, you know, just kind of stay in the middle and just kind of, you know, you got, if you got three lanes of traffic, you're blocking off partial, partial left lane, the entire middle lane, partial right lane, partial, the entire middle lane, partial left lane, uh, entire middle lane, partial right lane, and just keep swerving like that. You don't need to go completely over from fog line to fog line. I think that is confusing, um, you know, and I, and to be honest with you, I would hope that the um, guy would be able to describe this to his attorney and maybe the attorneys get with uh, um, the uh, prosecuting attorneys and they figure something out because I just don't, I just don't think the guy deserves a ticket. You know, it'd be different if, you know, he was, if the cop was doing what I was describing and then the guy was trying to pass the cop, it, it that would be different, you know, but 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 doing it so exaggerated yeah i think that probably added to the confusion um so and then another thing and what he got on the as far as the lying portion of it um they said that the cops smelled some sort of alcoholic beverage coming from him like he had been consuming some kind of alcoholic beverage and we say you know it's kind of weird the way we got way we have to kind of word things because alcohol isn't necessarily alcohol beverage you know uh, and it's kind of a technicality thing and i'm sure somewhere somebody one time uh probably challenged a cop that said alcohol and uh or even got tried to be specific um and uh you know alcohol is not the same as alcoholic beverage um but in any case um uh you know that's why we say choose some of the words that we choose sometimes it's not by nature and sometimes it just sounds silly because it is uh, but anyway um so they had the guy do some field sobriety tests and the um um the youtuber said something about you know he passed with flying colors or something along those lines um yeah field sobriety really is not a pass fail um it is more of a uh, gives you clues um and to be honest with you I have done so many of them. I could, I could probably still go out and drink a 12 pack and do those solid as rock. You know, it, it's really about muscle memory and it's really kind of a divided attention test. Uh, it's designed to see if you can pay attention enough to soak in the instructions we're providing and then execute what we ask you to, um, following the, instructions that we provided um so so anyway so we did that and then uh come to find out the guy's actually diabetic well here's the deal with diabetics um sometimes under the right circumstances a diabetic can smell like they're drunk um i've actually had this happen uh this was a more extreme case um but uh you know i had a guy that he had it was years ago Oh, and let me rewind a little bit. I just want to tell you a little side story about closing down the interstate. I had to do that one night. I had to shut down I-70 one time, like completely shut it down and reroute uh, traffic uh, onto um, an intersecting uh, interstate. Um, and it, it was quite the feat to do that by myself. And like, I had to completely shut it down and we you know, there was a lot of close calls, uh, but thankfully, you know, everything ended up working out and, uh, I'm not aware of any, I wasn't aware of any accidents that happened and definitely wasn't aware of any serious accidents. So, so shutting down an interstate, yeah, that's tough. It's a tough deal. Uh, but anyway, so going back to the diabetic thing, um, so the one instance, and I've had other dealings with, um, people who are diabetic as well you know and like i said sometimes under the right circumstances they smell like they've been drinking they there's like a sweet smelling odor or aroma coming from them and uh, sometimes they'll act drunk um the one i had like i said was little little extreme in fact it's actually pretty extreme um the guy had uh, crashed his car in a parking lot and it was a very minor crash i think he uh had uh bumped it into a um um into a parking pole maybe or something something along those lines 
um, but he didn't hurt anybody. The only thing that was hurt was his car. You know, it didn't even hurt, didn't hit, didn't hurt the concrete pole or nothing like that. Um, but we had got called there because of the way he was acting and, and, and the crash and, and all that. And it was a very minor crash too, from what I remember. Uh, but in any case, um, we get there and he is just acting drunk. And there was a, uh, I believe my sergeant was actually with me. So this guy, he's got more experience than I did at the time. Um, I don't think I was a rookie at the time, but I was definitely in uniform. Um, so it was definitely in the first 10 years of my career. And uh, so we get there and we're trying to communicate with the guy. And the guy just, guy just can't communicate with us. You know, I mean, he, he, he honestly, he looks like somebody that's just three sheets to the wind. You know, he's acting just like somebody that's extremely intoxicated. Um, my sergeant was ready to take him to jail uh, because there's no way we're going to do field sobriety tests on him. There's no way we're going to um, get him to be able uh, to submit to a, a breath test or blood test. Um, there wasn't enough of an accident, I guess, to force him to do an, a, a blood test because there are times if, when a blood test can be forced upon somebody um, with a search warrant, of course, um, and that would be more along the lines of a very serious injury accident or even a fatality. Um, but any, in any case, um, you know, so if somebody is so intoxicated, you know, it's sometimes, you know, you just can't really uh, get them to do the breath test or the blood test because they have to. You have to read them something and make sure that they understand it because they have the right to refuse that test. Um, so, um, so my sergeant was ready to ready to just take this guy to jail, and I told him I said, "Hold on," I said, "There's just something not right," and I didn't know what it was. It just there's just something that just didn't quite that just wasn't quite right. So I, uh, I told him, I said, let's call this guy an ambulance. Called an ambulance for him, for him and uh, ended up finding out he was going through a diabetic emergency. Um, and, uh, and like, but like I said, you know, I mean, he had all the signs. He had slurred speech. He had poor balance and coordination. He was involved in a, in a, in a car crash. He had an odor that smelled like alcoholic beverage coming from him. Or, or smelling like he had been uh, consuming alcoholic beverage. You know, he had all those things, you know, but he, but he wasn't drunk, he was diabetic, you know? And yeah, that's something that, you know, may get kind of confusing at times. And, and of course, if he would've went to jail, if for some reason he would've went to jail because, you know, I didn't call the ambulance or somebody that was there would've just taken him to jail, you know, that could have been defeated in court later and, and not probably not even gone to court you know, it would have been a pain in the butt for him because he would have had to get an attorney or at least um, give his medical history to the prosecutor's office and say, look, here's the deal. You know, I uh, was suffering a diabetic emergency. And to be honest with you, also just as kind of thinking as I go on, um, he'll be checked out by the, he would have been checked out by a nurse in uh, uh, the jail. And uh, the nurse probably would have, been able to identify that as well um, but in any case if somebody does make it through all that you know they just got to go talk to the prosecutor and say look I was suffering under diabetic emergency because sometimes you can't you just can't tell the difference you know it happens kind of like the accident sometimes shit just happens you know um, and like I said if somebody has all the signs and he did he had all the signs poor balance coordination slurred speech um, you know, involved in an accident, the odor, all that, you know, and, and probably more that I just can't remember because this is something that happened years ago and I'm speaking 100% from memory. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw out a quick disclaimer. I do this on a lot of my videos. If I'm inaccurate on the video that I'm making, um, that's fine. Um, my reports and my investigation is what stands, okay? And I'll be, you know, I could be inaccurate about some small things, you know, um, but typically, generally, I'm going to be pretty, pretty much right on. Um, so anyway, uh, so the kind of the third thing I wanted to, um, talk about was the, um, injury to the cop. Uh, apparently the cop uh, was injured, but he's on uh, video walking around. 
Well, and that caused a lot of negative comments. And this whole thing caused a lot of negative comments. And to be honest with you, I think that they're unfair. Other than maybe the ticket. I think there's some uh, pretty good complaints or pretty good legitimate complaints, I guess, or a legitimate reason to complain uh, about uh, the driver getting a ticket. Because to be honest with you, like I said, I don't, I don't agree with that. You know, and, and just because I don't agree with it doesn't mean it's not right. You know, it doesn't mean it's wrong. So it is what it is. Uh, but in any case, um, so the cop was on video uh, walking around right after the accident. Um, but now uh, there's a claim that he is injured and either has to have surgery, might have surgery or something along those lines. Um, what I can tell you, mm, just because you're walking around doesn't mean squat. <laughs> doesn't mean squat um i worked an accident one night i kid you not up on the highway ambulance had to come to the ha accident and they transported this guy uh, to the uh, to the hospital and uh, he was sitting up sitting up in the ambulance like he didn't have to be like he was sitting on the stretcher and uh, when they closed the doors and took off he didn't, he wasn't unconscious. He wasn't uh, anything like that. Uh, you, you know, he wasn't unresponsive and, uh, and it wasn't really that bad of an accident. Um, it was caused by um, a, a person had passed their, ac their exit. And instead of just going up and taking the next exit and just turning around, they tried to back up on the shoulder and then ultimately on the exit ramp and uh to get so in a position where they could continue on their exit this caused a guy to crash i uh, don't remember if i don't remember if he crashed in, into the other car if he just ran off and flipped his car or something but but in any case guy was 100 percent alert so i'm sitting there working the accident call tow trucks in and tow truck just leaving with his vehicle and i get a call on the radio hey yo this guy that went to the hospital he just died and this was a guy, he 100% awake. Like he was, he he died. And I'm like, uh, okay. Um, so at that point I called our reconstruction uh, people and basically, you know, if, there, if it's a fatality accident, it gets worked a whole lot different uh, than a regular accident. But there was no signs of this being even a serious injury accident. And um, yeah, that was that. I mean, we had even written the lady a ticket i think it was a lady i'm not 100 sure on that one but in any case we had written the person the other person a ticket for uh, basically something along the lines of improper backing backing on the interstate something along those lines and we were like holy shit this guy died and we called the city prosecutor's office and the da's office and all that and was like we need to get this ticket voided this ticket does not uh you know, it needs to be voided immediately because there could have been other charges. I don't know if there ever was any other charges, uh, but yeah, if she would have went straight up to the court and been like, hey, I got this fine. I want to pay it. <laughs> she might not have been prosecutable uh, in, another sin in another instance because she already paid the fine for that accident. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe I'm kind of speaking speaking a little uh i'm going a little too fast i think and i'm thinking as i go along and uh i think she probably if, if charges would have been necessary i think that she could have been charged even if she would have paid the ticket but in any case i know we had that worry at the time and we did call the city attorney's office and told him hey we need to make sure we get this ticket voided because this ended up being a fatality um another quick incident i want to talk about uh as far as injuries goes i was injured on the job one night and uh didn't want to go to the hospital um i just banged up my knee basically i'm like i'm fine it's a little stiff but i'm fine you know and i'm walking around and and my sergeant was like no you're injured you need to go to the hospital i'm like really you know it's towards the end of my shift i don't want to do this you know because i'll be at the hospital now for two three four hours you know i just, I just want to go home you know nope gotta go to the hospital you know you, you may actually have an injury and I'm like, okay, fine. So as time goes on, my leg is getting just a little stiffer and a little stiffer. And it's starting to hurt pretty bad. Like when I bend it. And when I bend it, I ended up in a leg brace for two to three weeks, I think. And um, about three or four days after the incident. Now, and mind you, this was after like the only, 
the only th physical evidence that I had that I was even injured was I had a little red mark on my knee. That's it. Just the red mark on my knee. Um, you know, everything else was internal. It was just kind of, like I said, it hurt a little, it ached a little bit, you know, as time went on, it got a little stiff, but I ended up in a leg brace and about three to four days after the incident, my entire lower leg, all the way from my knee to my ankle turned completely black and blue. Like it was just completely bruised. Uh, basically what I was told was, um, uh, cause as, as time progressed too, my knee started actually hurting a lot more. And basically what I was told was I had a, uh, um, a pocket of blood had formed underneath my kneecap and there's a lot of nerves under your kneecap and, um, and it swelled to the point that it was just hit, make, making those nerves hurt, cause pain, I guess. And then after about, and I was told you know, within a few days, uh, gravity is going to take over and all that blood is going to fall down into your, uh, down into your lower leg. And sure enough, it did. And it was a lot. Cause like I said, my entire leg all the way around calf shin from my knee to my ankle was completely bruised. Um, it was just completely black and blue and it got nasty looking. And like I said, I was in that brace for a couple weeks and I think I had to go through a little bit of physical therapy maybe. Um, but ultimately I ended up you know, ended up okay, and I was walking around and not wanting to go to the hospital that night. So sometimes you get injured and you don't know it. So anyway, that's my video. Uh, you know, check out my channel if you guys want. And uh, you know, like I said, I I'm gonna try to get into throwing a little bit more videos up there because uh, I did a lot. Of, I did a lot of pretty cool shit as a cop. I think. Um, you know, I know I've told people some stories in the past. Uh, things that I have done and uh, pe there there have been sometimes that people was pretty amazed I guess or impressed I guess with some of the some of the stuff that I've done in my uh, in my past and some of the cases that I've investigated because like I said I got some pretty <laughs> and there are some stories that to be honest with you I probably I don't I don't even know if I could share on this channel um, they're very explicit um, and I just don't think there's a way to effectively describe them without the um, without being too explicit and uh and yeah i got i got a couple of those um one that's just yeah anyway anyway until next time you guys have a good day